阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。呃 ，Thank you, everyone. Today, I would like to um begin our, you know. Sessions with our first June session of a youth group with the new book. Last time we have、um, finished、uh, ties,、uh, finished the speech on. I mean, I was sharing on Master Mister Yu who met the kitchen got the stove caught.、Uh, we begin our youth group, you know, study group with Liao Fan. So now we have made、uh, this journey into the. Uh, the two books that talks about cause and effect, about、uh, changing destiny.、Uh, so we have we have come quite a quite a bit、uh, all these years, all these years.、Um, so now we're going to start a new book called Treaties and Re- on Response and Retribution by the Exalted One. If you want to go by full translation, so Tai Shang is the Exalted One, commonly known in Taoist.、Um, Teaching as the Tai Shang Lao Jun,、uh, one of the three,、um, how to say, counselor in a sense, the most important、um, figures in in Taoist、uh, teachings, religion teachings. We, we, I prefer to use teachings because I don't want to spray too much religiousness into it. It is a teaching, is a proper solid teaching that teaches you、uh, to become a,、uh, you know. A heavenly being, a celestial being, and this one in our historical figure is Lao Tzu. I think everyone's very familiar. Lao Tzu.、Um, basically, it's written by him and passed down to、uh, to, to us. So, Gan Ying Pian here is the response and retributions. To be more accurate, this Gan means you receive feedback. I mean, Gan is the response. Ying is also response, but、um, 有感有应啊，就是 it's actually more like a um in if you want to use in functional way to understand this is person who emit the sickness is 感 person who receive the sickness and respond to it is 应 <clears throat> So in Buddhism we have a saying is if the sentient being has seeking for help, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas will. Uh, how to say? Respond to the reply for help. Buddha 有感，众生有感，佛菩萨就有应。It can be used in this way. In this case, both response and retributions describe 感应 Ah,、uh, response is just simply you know like you get what you sow. Retribution is also that, but it's more on a cons like it's more on a negative uh implication. Actually, it's just a translation. Uh, we can still discuss how to improve it, but this is what we're using at the moment. Gan、um, Ying basically means cause and effect. Right? It's a treatise on cause and effect by the Exalted One, and then the rest is just the translation, just saying that this is a translation. So now we have a forward.、Uh, I would like to share it that way we we understand、um, better under Master Jing Kong's guide.、Um, it. Is very important for us right now、uh, in this era, especially because we are in the era of、uh, very, in one way, is very open. Very, everyone can say anything, think anything. It's very free in that sense. You know, there's no structure, there's no standard、um, as、uh, as rigorous as it was it, it was before in different society, right? But back then, there rigorous、um, code. Uh, even dress code, the、uh, moral code, the、uh, societal code—good and be good or bad, 
in its effect, it has a structure and how you conduct your dealings with others between men and women, between the subordinates and the uh, uh, superiors and all that, parents and children. But in current time, we have a more loose definition of that. We still use the word ethics, but it become a very loose application. And it's sometimes only confined to law. And anything outside law, you know, it's up to you to interpret. It's what we call moral relativism. But I don't want to go too deep in that academic side. The point is everyone has their own standard in the sense right now. Uh, while it's very flexible, but it will cause confusion among every um, fabric of the societies, no matter what culture, religion they are. It happens in the in the world scale. So currently, this uh, situation leads to a lot of, um, we can say that uh, societal problems, um, mismanagement of a family unit, because the community is no longer as close knit as it was before. Well, it was good that it become more multicultural, but the essence of the traditions were not brought into the modern world. Uh, the, the good thing is not emphasized enough, right? While the close-minded part is already gone, it's good. But the good part of it, the one that talks about, um, you know, family values and stuff, still need to be brought over. Otherwise, human does not have anything to build on. <clears throat> so right now we are, and as a consequences, this is what happened: confusion and collapse on every every front. Um, the example would be uh, a high divorce rate. Now, this is already a uh, bread and butter of modern society problem. And this bread uh, causes a lot of family not being complete. Though there are good, there are cases where they found a better partner and they're also taking care of children well, but there are many, also many cases where kids were left in a broken family or in an abusive family that has no control over and that shaped their uh, mentality. And some who cannot overcome it brings over that suffering to other people. In US, some of them is school shooting. That's very extreme. Or in a lesser everyday example would be um, you bring the same kind of mindset to your own spouse and your own children. And that passed down the wrong value and uh, uh, ethics. So this, why do I go so such a big round about? Because Taishan Gaimei talks about uh, treaties, this treaties on response and retribution um, talks about cause and effect basically consequences if we don't do the right thing back then we have a <coughs> in uh we have um mr Gu and mr um El Fan, who gave us a lot of uh their own cases the cases they observe and they you they also mentioned Taishan Gaimpian in their um practice they use that as their starting point or as the standard when they're trying to do the merits and faults. So this book is the book that um, helps you to have a standard that uh, actually helps you to improve your life. <clears throat> so going back to this book, it was also part of a, a foundational course for Buddhism. Why would a Buddhist uh, group like this or a Buddhist monk like this, Pastor Ching Kong, with such prominence, promotes a Taoist book? That's what the outsiders would see. They would label us and they would say they would not be, it's a different religion, something like that. But we must understand how Chinese society works. Uh, we merge Confucian, Taoism and Buddhism together a long time ago. And we don't merge them and not understanding which is which, but we merge them because they share the same value. And this case, in the late, in the early nationalist era, I'm just showing the history of it, Master Ying Guang is the one who promote this fiercely in his circle of influence. He shared it with uh, everyone um, in his um, column. He say that this book is the book we need. Because as a as great as a, a, a master like Master Ying Guang, who is a patriarch, who is promoted as patriarch in Pure Land, he is the one who has done a lot of work in promoting Confucius and Taoist trust. This one is one of the Taoist to trust, the Leo Fans, the Mr. Yu who medication got is also a Taoist and Confucian to trust. Because he realized that the Buddhists to trust, the level are way too much, too high, and a lot of people have fallen into just theoretical side of the 
rather than practice. People as attached to form rather than substance. So they want to bring something more, uh, how to say, in the Chinese society, more um, common, commonly known, more, more, more layman to everyone before they promote the big sutras. So understanding this, uh, you know, why are we learning treaties on response and retribution, how it came to be, we will go into the text. So it was given by Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu, about, yeah, Ping is Lao Tzu. Um, and this, yeah, gives a lot of the evil deeds, 170 evil deeds, like a law laying down one by one. Um, and each of them has also mentioned their consequences uh, that could be committed by any common person, unenlightened person. So <clears throat> it also help. It also gives us advice. So understanding what is the what goes wrong, it gives us a advice how to um, amend the ways so that you can get your life back on track. So that's why, yeah, Master Ying Guang promoted this treaties. And for us, Pure Land practitioners, because we're part of the Pure Land group, we, uh, our main goal is going to Pure Land. This is a basic foundation. This is like a pre u foundational course to have enough um, merits to born in Pure Land. So does any other Buddhist aspirations. Because they're all talking about cause and effect, accumulating merits, avoiding faults. Don't let you Ah, later. So accumulating merits, avoiding faults, severing the evil and cultivate the goods. Um, this one is fe he emphasized heavily on teaching, uh, on, on what to do rather than uh, explaining. So that's why it's up to us to do the homework of giving you guys more context on each short uh, phrases, um, which you will see later. Right, so let's begin with section one. The first, uh, let's say, the mission statement of the entire sutra. So, the exalted one stated, "Fortune and misery do not happen at random, and nor are they the result of chance and machinations. They are instead caused by the karmic actions of each individual. The rewards for a person's virtue and good deeds, as well as the consequences of evil deeds, follows each like a shadow." So this is the um, very famous beginning. Uh, I mean, the, the the first sentence of the entire book. It also summarizes everything. This is what the book is all about. Um, cause and effect. How does it work? All right. How does cause and effect? In other way, fortune and misfortune, fortune and misery. All right. The effects. Right. And what's the cause of it? So many people might say it's random, or someone else outside control it. But the base of cause and effect is like echo. Who did the echo? Who's the originator of echo? Yourself. When you shout very loud, the echo will bounce back as loud. When you do not exert as much force in your voice, they will not come back as strong. The echo won't come back as strong. So same thing for this. Um, everything you do has a reaction, right? Newton's first law. Every action comes with reaction. Uh, results in uh, reactions. So this thing happens as well. Um, every fortune, every misery, they are not designed by someone else. They are not um, a luck or a lottery. What is lottery is the condition. The cause and effect is definitely there. It has to happen. But the condition is the one that we thought as a chance, a lottery, because conditions happens, changes very quickly. You don't you don't know the condition straight away. I mean, it, it will happen to you, and then when you have that cause, it merged together and becomes an effect. So this transformation is very quick. Um, I don't know how quick, but very quick. So they are caused by karmic actions. The rewards for a person's virtue and good deeds, as well as consequences of evil deeds, follow each like a shadow. So what the second phrase trying to say is, um, each of them are tailored for our own doings or undoings, unbecomings. So this um, this effect is exactly the same from what we did back then. 
So that's why retribution, right? The retributions or the rewards comes exact in the exact amount that we exert before. Uh, to put in the term, we sow what we, we, we reap what we sow, basically. So commentary by Master Ching Kong, just to give us a better understanding. Uh, Lao Tzu is also an enlightened person. And obviously, like Buddha, he is beginning with the karma, karmic understanding. Every good teacher, especially spiritual teacher, will begin with karma teachings. Even in Christianity and Islam, you, if you understand the, the Bible is in doubt, they always say something about um, someone who do the evil is like digging a graveyard and bury himself in there. It's karma. It's just a different way of saying it. Even Quran as well. It's just saying that if you do bad, ultimately you're the only one who get harmed the most. So there is no um, there is no long-term benefit on this. You may gain uh, a few uh, you know advantages at the time, but the cost is too high. The price you pay is too high. Uh, one of the example is maybe you um, you know you uh, you evade taxes or something like that. Uh, while you're already very wealthy, you're supposed to sh you know pay your due to the government to the society. But if you evade it, but you're supposed to earn two two hundred uh, billion, now they cut you down because you evade right. So the karma will do the job. You're supposed to earn 200 more billion. Who knows? I know what do you earn instead, 200 million. And then you still think I'm very smart because I, I, I get the extra money out of it. What happened is the discount is already happening, guys. It's just not worth it, trust me. If you do things right, follow the law, the human law and then the law of karma, the universal law, then what you will get, you will get. Right? What is owed to you, you will be repaid. What you owe to others, you also need to repay. Uh, very fair, guys. It's just a matter of time. We understand Einstein already discovered that time is not straightforward. Right? Time, dilation and all that. Things, things were dragged out or being compressed depends on uh, how intense the energy is. So how intense your karma is. If your karma is very intense, this is what Liao Fan say, big evil, big do big evil doers or big um, people with great merits or great evils, they will reap their result very quickly. Same thing. This is why. Because you shout very loud into the the, the, the mountains, the echo will come back as loud. If you just like a normal person speak in the normal tone, it will not come back as strong. So that's it. And then anyway, we have to understand because of time issues, not Things that fall upon you cannot be judged by your current lifespan. How long is your lifespan? Right? 20, 28 years old, 30 years old, 50 years old. It's short, it's baby, guys, in universal scale. It's important, but it's very small. So how can someone with some, such a short lifespan like create some, so much um, bad karma? Sometimes they are because of the habits and everything. Sometimes people who understand the belief very good like good people or something, they if they suffer from the uh, negative karma or misfortune or you know marry into a wrong household or something like that, then they got misery because of a lot of cases, divorces or or you know work is not going well, and that person might actually be you know say decent. That's because in the past life they have done it, but most of the cases are actually you know we might need to reflect something's not uh, completely. Uh, reform in ourselves like Mr. Yu. Most cases like Mr. Yu who does not aware what goes wrong and thinking I'm collecting merits only to end up with a cold water bath. <laughs> like in, in his case he lost he it takes him how many? Seven children. Seven children that die either in childborn, in stillborn or in young age and uh, lost his most precious son. It also took his wife to get uh, took a blind to get blind. His, his wife get blind, his most precious surviving son gone, only one daughter left, financially not st uh, financially uh, financially crippled. It took him this much suffering to realize his fault. Let's hope we don't have to go there to, to reach that point. Hence these lessons is here for this.
So understanding the mission statement of the entire book, we're trying to begin with, um, we will continue on with the second sentence. Depending on the severity of a person's individual offense, the spirits of justice shorten his or her original lifespan in proportion to the level of weakness, wickedness involved. In Chinese, there are so, just like our law, right, our legal system, this is how they work as well. Um, if you commit a lot of offenses, you will get punished more often. If you commit uh, good deeds, you will get a reward. Uh, and they have someone who carry out the enforcement. Obviously, it has to be a different life form than us. Otherwise, how can they see clearly? If you're like us, like normal humans, that's what we have, legal system but a lot of loopholes, uh, tax evasion and all that happening, or some cases they are not fair. You know? Supposedly someone was wrongly accused, human without ability to see on the spot what's happening, have to rely on evidence. It has to go a long way, loop around, trying to investigate, deduce. Nothing is better than actually seeing what is actually happening, right? So that's why we need a different level of life form to do that job. So this case, we call it spirits. Uh, in Chinese, we call it in the heaven and earth, there is a si guo zi shen, basically the spirits of justice. Si guo means like a legal legal uh, spirits. They are, their job is to examine the merits and faults of every individual. Every individual. And obviously, following what the offenses, the level of offenses, the level of wickedness, they will um, uh, rule out, uh, pass out the sentences. And these sentences is at the expense of your life. So everyone say, uh, you know, fine, $100, $200, wealth. Guys, that one is actually quite light. The actual serious one is, as you understand, in our human legal system is life sentence. That means time. They punish your time. Because we understand that we are always on uh, counting down, right? Human life is on countdown. The moment you reborn as a human or any beings, you are on countdown. So if you're very good uh, merit, you have huge merit, you bought with you 80 years worth of time. So in a, imagine a sand, uh, imagine a countdown timer. So in this case, they will cut down the countdown quicker. That means your lifespan will shorten. So this is how they punished us. Uh, this is how we inflict punishment on ourselves. And then we'll continue. Furthermore, not only do offenders have their lives shortened, various punishments such as misery, poverty, ill repute, misfortune, illness, legal penalties, and the like will be bestowed and last until death results. So as you can hear in the Chinese turn is quite one by four by four, four by four, four by four. This means that they're already going straight to the point, listing out what are the consequences other than shortened lifespan. Obviously, if your lifespan, that means the time that you bought with you, the moment you were born, is counting down, right? It's already like minus day by day, but this one is accelerating the deduction, uh, your, I mean, accelerating the death, basically. Obviously, um, <clears throat> during the process, it's not just your lifespan, right? The quality of your life will be affected, right? QOL, quality of life and the lifespan. Sometimes, because if you think about that way, some people have life, long life, say give it 90 years old. But a 90 years old who enjoys having a healthy, complete family, grandchildren, and able to walk on a park uh, they do, uh, every weekend with their sons and grandchildren, compared to a 90 years old that lie on the bed, a hospital bed, almost 24-7. It's a huge difference, right? It's like heaven and heaven and hell sometimes. So this is also the reason why we need to accumulate merits or fortunes. Because we want to make this dream as this is a dream, right? This world is a dream. But we want to make this dream as bearable as possible. 
There's no reason for us to make it miserable for us unless we have a strong Bodhisattva vow. That's different. Okay, the Kisang Pusa, City Gaba goes to hell, wants to um, wants to save all the beings on the hell. Until they, all of them were emptied, he will not be Buddha. That's different. That's that's a very powerful energy. It generated by body heart, the heart of compassion and wisdom. But in a normal purpose person uh, like us, what we want to do for now is we want to improve our quality. And all these offenses are reducing it, working against us in improving our own quality of life or the quality of life of our people around us. Um, it, will, it, will, it will carry over to the people around us as well. <clears throat> so what kind of um, punishment on the quality of life? What kind of reduction? First is misery. Misery is it comes in many forms. It, it can be, you know, terrible relationship with your spouse, terrible encounter in your office. Uh, suddenly everything was going well and then COVID happens. Oh wait, it actually happened. Suddenly your business is going well and then COVID happens. That's a misery, guys. Or some people can still withstand the pressure, financial pressure from COVID. That means they have merits. They have enough fortunes. Some people cannot. They have to close shops. They lose a lot of income. Misery. Remember, these are no by no means jeering, laughing at people's misfortune. These are analysis of what's happening. And this analysis has been done for thousands of years. Many, many people, great position, right? Well educated. I'm just talking about in the Chinese side, uh, the the civilization, like the Song Dynasty. This one, this book has been used from Song Dynasty till now. The recorded use of it, and all the big government officials, all the well educated people, very um, how to say, smart people. They use this book as their standard in conducting their governance. If they use it well, they will do well in their governing uh, uh, province. That means they take care of people well. Because they themselves will be afraid of the punishment first. You won't, how to say, you can't carry out something, you know, laws and orders and policy on others if you don't put yourself in their shoes first. Or if you don't uh, have that sense of uh, fear of consequences if you do it wrong, right? Say if, if you are a magistrate, court magistrate, if you don't take care of your judgments and sentences, uh, as if your own children, your own parents are on that court, under the scrutiny of the court, then you would not do things well. The only time you would do it well is you put yourself in their shoes and say, hey, if this is my parents, if this is my siblings, who was being uh, judged by the uh, court, then I will not pass the sentence so easily. Because you, now you have, you have put yourself in their shoes or you put someone you, you care in, in their shoes, and then you like, I would want the best outcome for them all. I will want them to be under the most fair and just judgment. That's why they can do well in their governance and whatever the job they have, because they understand that. Same for us, we need to put ourselves in the shoes, the other end of receiving end of justice or receiving end of policy. Only then we can able to do our job well. So back to the point, misery, poverty, needless to say, still happening nowadays, even worse. And understanding Understanding this book will help us to understand the cause of poverty, the un the reason why there are no equalities or hard to gain full equality in this world, like zero poverty, zero war, zero something, because there are causes that keep generating into this effect, and this effect in form of poverty, in form of war, in form of societal breakdown, and something like that, in turns convert into cost that will generate even more effect. Ying 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 So the seeds becomes the fruit. The fruit generates the seeds. The seeds also create another fruit. The fruit also create another seeds. This is what Buddha said about karma will not be empty even though the whole world is empty. It's not the karma itself won't be empty. The process of transforming a seed into the fruit will not empty. And an enlightened person's job is to understand this in, in, in the rawest, rawest sense and then, un, and then trying to grab the conditions, soil, water, and air. So this is why we, yeah, I'm, I'm not going too far. Sorry, I'm going too far. But 
yeah. <clears throat> this is a, where, where you understand this basic, the fun part comes in. Not fun, but the enlightening part comes in. Your Many things make sense in your life. You repute. <clears throat> you repute. What else? You repute, right? Everyone uh, think this guy's bad or something like that. Um, reputation is important for human life. Without reputations, you can't build. You can't have a career established. You can't have your family established. You can't have yourself established. Um, I'm talking about in the most vanilla, most uh, average sense. Like you need to have clean uh, criminal record, credit history, in order to function like a normal uh, member of society. You know, to have loans. You know, I'm working in bank. We always credit checks. All right, this person and if. Uh, Good conduct or not, if they borrow a lot of money, we want to see if they have good conduct. If their credit is clean, we have to ask accountant like how and say, please give us a report on your company's earning and everything. Everything is important. Reputation is important if you want to build something in this society. And and you repute will trans will translate into many forms of harm. Uh, in from financial harm, in form of your own, uh, you know, mental health and all that. So. Okay, misfortune. Yep, we say enough of that. Illness, right? Human life, uh, especially now, COVID and everything happening. Illness is something, it's no stranger to us. We all gone through flus and colds, but sometimes it can be serious and knock you out. Sometimes you just take your life away. That's it. And also the age is also an illness, right? Aging, aging itself is an illness. Um, a, 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 a sort of a result of not liberating from your six realms. Aging is happening. No matter which realm you go, as long as you're not liberation, age, this kind of big units like ageness will not go away. But we're talk, what we're talking about here is the common common level as in bedridden or small flu, COVID, they all have their own karmic um, Tracing, you can trace the coming, the cause and effect if you if you have the access. Legal penalties and the light will be best on last until death results. So the final one is death. So if nothing else, if they cannot penalt, I mean incur penalty anymore, you know you 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 don't have any more left for them to pen, uh, pen, uh, to to take, you know, to, um, then you die. And what happened after you die? A lot of people say, that's it, I'm liberated. Good luck, man. Good luck. No, the real the real thing happens after you die. Because you already, um, this this form of existence will be converted in a different form of existence. Energy cannot be destroyed, can only be transformed. We are all energies, right? Kinetic or whatever, the biological or anything. Whatever terms we use, it's a form of energy. If we die, we just get rid of, I mean, this, this form is gone and then the next form will come in. You will transform into another existence. Is it better or worse? Who decide that? Your own karma. All right? Your own karma. So that's why I always go back to this sentence. All right? Who decides the level of your existence? Yourself. How? Everything that you accumulate here or in Alaya consciousness, the, the heart is strife. Who decide that? Which one is the strongest will decide where you go? That's so why we need to learn Del Fun first and uh, Mr. Yu first before we learn this. Otherwise, everyone will be like, oh, this is a lot of spirits and gods. The whole point of this book is not about uh, talking about um, religiosities or is that God or not God. The point is your karma decides everything. Everything else, form, be it in human or in spirit or in whatever, in the thing or in a career, they are arising from your heart. All phenomena arises from the heart. That's the first sentence. Wait, there's one of the first sentences uh, Buddha mentioned when he gained enlightenment under the trees. So as this. And these are these are there, okay? So there are various demigods and spirits such as. So I'm going on to the second sentence. Now they are going real technical on this. Not technical, but they, they're going in depth, all right, on how this works from the um, system, the Taoist system. And it, it's applicable everywhere. 
Also, there are various demigods and spirits, such as half-spirit and gods of the north, who shadow each individual and record, impartially and without mistakes, each their offences. If a person has committed a great evil, 12 years are shaved off his lifespan, or small offences warrant only a reduction of 100 days. There are over a hundred offences, both severe and light, that those who wish to live a long life must know. So here they go in depth with more, um, uh, how to say, more agents who dispense the justice, the karmic justice, uh, like half spirit, which is basically the stove god that we talk about, uh, kitchen god, stove god. Mr. Yu who met the stove god, that's him. Half, all right. San Tai Bei Do Shen Jun. Is that? Yeah, maybe. And then gods of the north, Bei Do Shen Jun, <coughs> who shadow each individual and record. Basically, they are the auditors. They audit what you did. And obviously, if we, we got to have some, like, if we do something not good, they will punish. So how do they punish? This one goes more in detail. How many lifespan will be shaved off? 12 years. You have to do a really, I will do some research, but you have to do some really serious offenses to get 12 years to shave off. It's worse than life sentence. <laughs> and the small offenses warrant only 100 days reduction. Um, one year is 365 days. So three small offenses, one year taken away. Right? Now 30 small offenses, 10 years of your life taken away. Our lifespan give it 70 years. Right. So I'm accounting for our lives. Give it 70 years average. How many more can we have? You and I were around 20, 30 years of age, some 40, 50. So not much. Each day we spend eight hours on work. Plus and minus commute, nine hours. And lunch, 10 hours. Oh, I forgot lunch. And then 10 hours gone. And then we have another 14 hours. 14 hours, how many hours do we use to sleep? Give it a normal eight hours. All right. Uh, six hours to eight hours. To give it eight hours. All right. Uh, six hours left. How many hours do you use to clean, to do the housework, and then to cook and all that? Give it two hours. We have four hours left. Ladies and gentlemen, these four hours, how much do we use on cultivating what we want? Myself, <laughs> I'm still wasting it. So that's why when I look at this, I was like, oh my God. And Think of punishment, but think of the offenses as well. Like <clears throat> we are more or less we will commit small offenses. The speech, the thought, the action, hence the three karmas, right? The 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 end, the, the commit the the way you commit is through these three: thoughts, speech, and actions. You know, uh, the speech. You know, one of the five precepts. Now we understand why precepts happen for a reason, guys. Um, and 100 days is a lot. So there are over 100 offenses, both severe and light, and those who wish to live a long life must know. No one wants to die, understandably. No one likes the, the point of death. Everyone wants a happy life. The thing is, um, understanding Buddhism, for us who already been there, uh, read, exposed to this, we don't have to go through the long road. We understand that if there is a life, there is death. If there is death, there is life. They will always spin around like the cause to effect, effect to cause. But if we severe the bone, there will be no death because there will there's no pusen to pumie, like bodhisattva guan yin pusen pumie buko pujing pusen pujing. Obviously, that's a that's a state we want to be. That's a state of well, we can say nirvana, rest. But um, in for us, it's going to pure land. All right, getting out of this. Endless cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect. If there is a cause, there's always, always an effect. If the condition is there, then it will keep going. So for us, the our condition is there. Birth is the cause of death. Death is the cause of birth. As long as there's birth, there's death. As long as there's death, there's birth. If we get out of this, then we'll be able to stop this cycle altogether. Obviously, you can go back in, but you already like a like gameplay, like game playing game, like playing an avatar on a TV. But right now, we are not. We are inside that game, and we thought everything is real. We are not aware of it. So, our job right now to ourselves, to our friends and family, especially to those people who are trying to wake you up, 
masters and venerables or people who work so hard to get the sutra down to in front of your table. Our basic duty is to get out of it, to meet them in person and say thank you and then go back in and pull more people out of it. That's the whole point of Buddhism, guys. That's it. There's nothing more. No complicated rituals and everything. It's just to remind us we need to get out. Now, back to here. Offenses will be punishment. Big offenses, 12 years. Small offenses, 100 days. We use the legal understanding, then we understand this immediately. Now, this is Okay, in Chinese, they didn't even tell you 12 <laughs> This is 计算, 计一计. In Chinese, the calculation is 12 years. All right? 算 is uh, 多计, 多算. 算 is 100天, so 12 years, 100 days. So translation helps us. If we read straight from Chinese, it's like, what? Because the way they use it is in the old days, the, the you know, the, the old ways of calculating stuff. So anyway, <clears throat> so have I finished that? You have 三十神人's, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 大几多几, 小几多算. Yep, yep, that's what we talk about. But just want to emphasize the the way they report to the heavens is these agents, half spirit, gods of the north, also the other called San Si Shen, the the gods about the spirits, the agents that rest on your head, your chest and your legs. Basically, three parts, and everything you do, everything you say is recorded, like an auto machine, auto logging. Okay, they lock, lock down everything you do. In other sense, in Buddhist sense, we say the alaya consciousness. Keep it simple, more, more understandable. Consciousness, like a, like your, your, your Buddha nature convert into the eight, right? Alaya consciousness, Mona consciousness, Mona si, Alaya si, and then the six, con the six, uh, si, the six consciousness, and then the five senses that science has reached. You know, the sense of nose, uh, uh, so the, 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 the touch, the taste, the hearing, the, uh, um, the smell, the five senses. So this, is how it works. There's different interpretations. So this, there's three in the body and they will collect everything you do, everything you say, everything you think. And if you read Mr. Yu, which is our foundational understanding, everything he thinks is not clean. Hence, he will not get the merit he asked for. Say, getting into a good job, which is imperial appointment, or getting into the exam that allowed him to pass so that he can get the basic salary. He can't. He, he didn't get it until he's 40, 50 years old. That's three years after he changed his life. So that's why, because these people keep reporting up there and say, I can't give him anything if he has no merits. Like your KPI, right? Um, this guy has a KPI of what? Our standard is 100%, and this guy only reached 80% subpar. So this guy is underperforming or not reaching the standard. How can we give him bonus? bonuses? And on the other hand, Mr. Yu's case, if we use that to make this better understandable, is Mr. Yu is in a negative, in penalties, rather than merits, before he changes life. He's, he's going downward spiral because everything he do is offenses. The thought of, you know, last greed. It will go in detail later. So this is how it works. <clears throat> Kitchen God as well, the stove God as well. The stove God don't do it every day. Stove God, they will do it on the month end. So basically, it's like a different level, right? Like manager will come in every month and collect the report from the from the frontline worker and say, "Hey, how's it going, guys?" And then he just collect the report, compile it, and then send it to the CEO, which is the heavenly emperor. So think of it in the modern company structure; it's easier to understand. The heavenly emperor and say, "Okay, chop, put a stem. Okay, this guy, go on. He will, you know, receive his punishment or reward." This part of treaties describes the effects of evil karma. Buddha has confirmed in the Da Wu Liang Su Jing. In, in the demigods and observe, record the observance. Basically, what we say, they are agents of the karma, carry the duty of inflicting punishment without partiality or mistake. That's why their best part is because they are coming from a different dimension, right? They don't, they don't think or feel like like us. 
they see what it is and inflict equal punishment as is. There is no sense of, oh, it's my father, it's my mother, so I will have to help them a bit. Yes is yes, no is no. One is one, two is two. That's the partiality that human cannot achieve or very few can achieve. Obviously, having said that, they also are cases, um, I'll bring out like a lot of monks and everything, they have done great cultivations. All the people who are actually quite good, like, you know, like they're not big bad or big evil, uh, big good or big bad. They're just normal and they're doing their job, they're being dutiful. When they brought into the, the Yama realm, the lower realm of punishments, not punishments, like their lifespan is almost up. Some of them really sincere and say, they, oh, I, want, I want to take care of my parents. The fact that they can even stand in front of the Yama king and ask him, can I, expect, uh, can I have a uh, few more years to take care of my parents, means that that person is worthy of consideration. So there are exceptional cases that they will entertain. But not in the sense that we use emotions or anything. He will only see that this guy is actually quite good. He take care of his parents, being filial, uh, being being a good human so, uh, member to the society. Um, I think we can give him a few more years to see if he can accumulate more merits. Being there alone is already enough to give you that sense of urgency. Oh, shoot, I have five years left, guys. Work. So if you were a person who worked on deadline, this is very useful. <clears throat> work. If you can only work when deadline is here, then this is a very useful way. That's why the whole teaching of cause and effect is to tell you the deadline, the consequences of reaching the deadline. And then it forces you to be diligent. Yeah. Everyone has already have a set time, set timer when they're born. It's based on what your karma. Some That's why you can't have equality if you only look at this one life. Because everyone has co uh, done a different amount of work. How can you expect the effect to be the same? It's not fair for them as well. If they done 100 hours of work and you only done one hours of work, how can you expect to enjoy the results of someone who done one hour, 100 hours of work? It's fair, isn't it? But we cannot look at this one life. This one lifetime is too short. You have to look many lifetimes to understand. So based on this one, we understand that the inequality is actually the equality. It is so, the thing we saw in unequal, inequal, why is this person born with all the loving family, wealthy uh, 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 stuff, and then you know everyone's respect to him, and then he already has his life set to be a prominent uh, member of a society. But why is this person born into an abusive family, getting through all this crap, you know, losing and then impoverished, and then all the persons he like pass away, something like that. We understand the past life, then we understand why. And the, reason, the, the important part is what is he going to do about it? If the number one is enjoying his life too much, to a point of indulgence, wasting away his merits, instead of doing, because being a part of an influential people, member of society, you can do a lot of good or a lot of bad. Look at history, you will know. If he continues to do that, if he has the enlightening understanding of that, then his memory only get better and better. He might even go to heaven. But this, if he wasted on you know prostitutes, on 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 you know, misconducts, on buying ten more Lamborghini on top of his two hundred Lamborghini collections, then yeah, of course he will spend all his money because he did nothing good. Same goes for this miserable person that if he works hard or if he understand I mean if he not bowing down and actually you know try to change his life you know by you know being still maintaining humanities and being hardworking then he will get there <clears throat> that's it that's that's it for the first section of the um, treaties on the response and retribution by the exalted one I will stop here because I want to leave some space for your um, feedbacks. So, so far, uh, guys, do you guys uh, have any uh, questions or anything you would like to say? So, what I'm doing is telecasting what it is. <laughs> but yeah, I think, in all honesty, I, uh, I, 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 
I, I uh, repent that I did not do as uh, much reading actually even on Liao Fan and, and Mr. Yu but this kind of session helps me to read because it forced me to read and forced me to, to understand and I find Tai San Gai and Pen is it's really there's a why there's a reason why people you know um, do this kind of uh, I mean they, a lot of um, Gao Guan a lot of people of prominence they they use this as their standards or even Mr. Yu and Liao Fan use this as the way to um, see is good or bad so look at for example I'm just going to give you an overview this one is um, one by one they are all like like precepts you know but in details what is good what is bad so this one talks about the good and if you look at here it's like a like bible basically commandment one two three four five so they tell you what is good and what is bad and then we can expand and say how we apply this in daily life uh, and yeah and this one is a lot we can say a lot of things from here uh, because this English already make it so nice so easy to understand in Chinese the good thing about Chinese is they have so much context hidden within the short eight sentence eight characters and depend on your level of literacy um, your level of life basically how much you experience your life you can actually make it really nice or you can make it really short in my case because I don't understand the word fully that means I have to hug the book. In this, they already give you a certain level of understanding and we can use that as a foundation to expand into the real life examples and commentaries. And this one is the offenses. The meat of the book is offenses. So that one, that's it. Just now what you saw, that one short sentence is all about the virtues. The rest of the book, which you can see from page six, all the way to 70 <laughs> everything over here guys all the way to 70 something i think yeah <laughs> it's offenses so this book has served or well, more than that sorry 84 it serves as like a cautionary tale uh or more like what not to do you know telling you what not to do and then to push the point home they will tell you what is the consequences. We already have a have a short preview of that, but this one goes deeper. Um, and the whole sutra of you know the you know the Siddhigarbha sutra, original vows, Bodhisattva Siddhigarbha, Dijang Pusa but Yuan Jing, is to tell you the consequences if you commit all this. Um, some of them it's understanding. It's like sometimes you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. This one is um, I have to I have to refer to the source material and the 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 commentaries from recommended by the masters. Otherwise, I wouldn't understand. And then this is what his commentary, Master Shinkos. That's it. <laughs> if I choose the crimes outlined in the aforementioned eighty-four sub, represents all conducts that virtuous men might avoid. Yeah, I mean this one as well is quite. Um, the, the reason they put it at the bottom is. The whole point is about respect, isn't it? Like, yeah. So I, I will have uh, quite a challenge to explain this to our sense, our modern sense. Mm. Remember that, yeah, the law is still there. I mean, doesn't matter you're modern or ancient, because we will become ancient people anyway. After two thousand years, right? <laughs> we'll become ancient history. So, what is ancient? What is modern? Um, yeah. And the last one is talking about the retributions and the ending is just telling you what to do. And this one just wraps up really well with what we have learned. That's it. Anything else, guys? Just stop sharing. Uh, me. Tuo. Fo. Uh, me. Tuo. Fo. Uh, me. Tuo. For ah me to 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 for ah me
May the merits we have accrue from this Dharma discussion, discussion of good books, be dedicated to the karma creditors of all at present and all uh, families, friends, and Dharma practitioners of all places. Uh, may they be liberated and reborn in pure land, in better realms, if not pure land. And may they be relieved also um, from sufferings of, you know, birth, age, sickness, death. Uh, may we also dedicate this merit to the beings who have suffered uh, in our world from all calamities, wars, man-made or natural, from all illnesses, pain, unjust. Uh, may they all be realized, may the Dharma, may the, may the, may the laws of karma be known wider, spread wider, make it in a common consensus throughout the whole humanity, so that we may truly, practically, earnestly lead our life an honest one, an upright one, a positive one, an empowering one, not just to ourselves, also to our family, friends, strangers, other countries, other worlds. Uh, may Master Ching Kong's teaching spread far and wide as well, so that all will realize uh, confidence uh, in goodness of their heart is as important uh, as all the merits and virtues that we have accrued. May the merits and virtues accrue from this work, adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teaching for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Namo Ami. Tofu. Namo Amitabha Buddha. Amitabha Buddha. Amitofu.